Hello everyone, up with all good, big shout out to KRCT Couriers and Transport Limited and a big thank you to everyone who likes, shares, comments and subscribes to the All or Nothing podcast. Sitting next to me is none other than Liverpool legend, John Conti. Boxing legend. Tell us, John, thanks for coming on, by the way. Tell That's us a little bit about um, how it all started and you know where, where it left off. Well, I started not far from here in Kirby. Although I was born in Toxted, I moved when I was four. In uh, 55, born in 51, I moved to Kirby and uh, I, was, I was at the Kirby Amateur Boxing Club yeah. when I was 11 years of age. My dad took me down to Kirby ABC with Charlie Atkinson, Tucker Edmondson, Tommy Singleton, John Lloyd, uh, Richie Lloyd actually, Richie Lloyd, John was his son. Yeah. But John runs Kirby now. So tell us a little bit about your boxing career from, you know, after you left Kirby, you know, because you turned the pro, didn't you? And you yeah, you I turned pro when I was 20, he yeah, had nine years amateur and I turned pro. Uh, I could have waited for the Olympics, 19, I turned pro in 71, 72 Olympics, I think it was Munich. And, uh, but I was getting offered so much money, yeah. you know, from uh, London, I thought, no, I'll turn pro now. Is that where you went to London? Yeah, I went to London, yeah. So and, uh, what was your, uh, your biggest achievement up in London? So I went to turn pro in 1971, I won the uh, European and uh, Commonwealth titles, uh, British and European titles, uh, of, or the British Commonwealth titles of Chris Finnegan. Yeah. A great fighter, Chris, and um, then I won the European Championship and then I uh, won the world title in 1974 at wow. the Empire Pool Wembley in 1974, which is now the Wembley Arena. The world title, 1974. So you were in like the same league as John H. Stracy and John H., uh, Alan Minter, yeah. and Charlie Magri. Uh, yeah, they were uh, great fighters, Alan world Brooklyn. champions, yeah. and of course, well, of course, Alan, yeah, yeah was before yeah. me, just before me in the 60s, and uh. A great inspiration and Alan, yeah. uh, great fighters, uh, they, they inspire you, say oh yeah they can do it, it's, uh, I can possibly do it because they've done yeah. it. Especially Scousers as well because like, you know I think it was hard for the likes of us from an area in Liverpool, although we, we like had a lot of like talent, you had to go to London to, to make it. Well, I loved it, I loved to go, the idea was to go to London because yeah. it was the capital. It's the great capital, you know, to go to London. We yeah. all wanted to get there, didn't <laughs> it? So that was fantastic because uh, and all the big venues were there. Yeah. The Empire, Bill Wembley, uh, Albert Royal, Albert Hall. They had big venues there. You know, yeah. you had to go to fight with a Sky TV when they came in. Yeah. Doesn't matter where the venue is now. You can get a camera in there. You beam it all over the world. Yeah. But then you had to come to the, you had to go to the big halls. It was great to go there as well. You know. Cause, uh, so what was your boxing record like? I had uh, tw uh, thirty-nine fights, thirty-four wins, one draw, four losses. Four losses, how many as, KOs? As, as a oh, 20 odd, 20 25 odd. maybe. Uh, so inside the distance, not necessarily KOs, but stops, yeah. cuts, whatever. And what weight was your last? Some, some uh, light heavy, 12 and a half stone. So that's it, right? Light you, heavy. So the next step is what? Is it? Well, it was uh, heavyweight then, the next yeah. step, because there was no cruiser weight. Cruiser weight was light heavy. Yeah, that's what I mean. The yeah, maximum yeah. Le limit was 12 and a half stone. Anything after that was officially heavyweight. Now you've got a cruiser weight, an actual <laughs> cruiser weight yeah. between 12 and a half and 14 stone, I think it is roughly. Yeah, no, I was, I was Which would have suited yeah. me, but uh, I wasn't weak at 12 and a half. But my first 20 fights were heavyweights. Yeah, brilliant. So what is it that you do with yourself these days? Uh, You're talking about like little after dinner speaking events. Yeah, yeah, after dinner speaking. I was yeah. just trying to say, trying to think of a scout one line and I was like, <laughs> anything's a robot, anything's a food. Where, what do you do now? Yeah. Bob and weave. I'm still bobbing and weaving. The job. No, I do uh, after dinner speaking. I was doing a lot of that until COVID hit, you know, yeah. and that knocked everybody out. But, uh, and, but I still do uh, a few now. They're coming in the after dinner sporting dinners, after dinner speaking. Yeah. And, uh, yeah, that's it, really. And you've moved up to London and relocated, haven't you? Well, I turned pro when it's 1971, when well, I went down to London, North London, and Georgie Francis, who was my manager in Islington, you go where your manager's based. Uh, if I was based in South London, I would have trained at the Thomas a Becky, where yeah. the great Henry Cooper used to train in that. Uh, but I was North London, I trained in Hampstead. Uh, and I met my wife, so she's from Harrow, and I'm so we're, um, I live near Wofford now. So like Henry Cooper, was he beat? Was he at heavyweight? He yeah, was, wasn't he? Because yeah. he fought at Muhammad Ali, didn't Muhammad he? Muhammad Ali, yeah, he, he, he stopped on cuts, you know, because he suffered, suffered from cuts. He broke and, his hand uh, as well, didn't he, at one point? Uh, I'm not sure about the hand now. The left hook, yeah, yeah. yeah. He was his great left hook. Uh, but um, he certainly broke, I think he broke Ali's jaw with the yeah. left hook when he put him down. Oh, yeah. he, he, the, first, the, first, the first man to put him down, weren't he? 
Yeah, but Muhammad Ali was the greatest, I think, greatest fighter. Did you ever meet Muhammad? I boxed twice on his bill. Did you? Croke Park, Dublin in 1972, when he fought uh, Alvin Blue Lewis, I think it was. Oh, it was the other way around when he fought Alvin Blue Lewis in Vegas in 73. Yeah. But me and John H. Tracy was on the bill as well in, Ve in Vegas. And uh, it was billed England versus America, and we beat them 2-1. Yeah. Can I ask you a question, right? Joe, when he fought Joe Bugner, he fought yeah. Joe Bugner. And... See, I, I grew up with like, the likes of Joe Bugner, like, um, you know, mm. you, you've got Edward Norton, um, you'd add like... Ken Norton. Ken Norton, yeah. sorry, Tyson. Yeah. You know, Spinks, Leon Spinks. Yeah. All these great heavyweights in the 80s. Yeah. You know, you were a little bit be yeah, before them. Before, I was tired in the 80s. Can I ask you what your thoughts are on today's boxing, you know, the heavyweights? and Is it a different ball game? Well, well first of all, I'm the wrong fella to ask in a way because I don't follow it that close. Yeah. So I'm just being honest about that. Otherwise, I'll be waffling away about yeah. it. Me. These fights, I step back and I just got a general idea of it. Yeah. Not even that now. Yeah, I'm thinking about it. So you got the likes but of AJ would, and and you would, and stuff like that, now, haven't you? you were... Yeah. Okay. I couldn't really talk about that, that external bit because yeah. I don't know enough of it. But who they are. Boxers, where you're coming from, what you do, what you have to yeah. do to win and all that. Yeah, I can talk all day about that. I enjoy mm -hmm. all that. I know where that comes from, you know, given that. And that's to get to the top, whoever they are now, the subject we brought about, about who are the champions now and all the rest of it. Well, to be a champion, to get to the top, you got to give it, eat, sleep and drink it, you know? Yeah. My trainer used to say, most fights are won and lost on the training area. Yeah, because it's all about nutrition these days, isn't it? It's like... Well, I don't know if you know about like what it, what it, what it's about. Like it's all dietitians and you know nutrition. Fantastic, and, yeah. Yeah, everything. That all helps. Yeah, I'm sure we were we were ahead of the ones before us and them yeah. before them. That's all. It gets better and better with it's, science. It's and medicine. Evolved, doesn't it? it evolves, yeah. <laughs> yeah, and that's it. Yeah. So, but the same comes down to the same problem: is that when the bell goes, all that stuff and doesn't help you. Yeah. You can't fight. <laughs> yeah. It's just basically about the fighting, yeah, you know, all that true, help. Yeah. But, uh, but the same fellas in the same corner is taking all that as well, getting all this, the benefits of what's yeah. being uh, introduced, you know. So that's good. But it's still down to you two fighting in the ring, you know what I mean? Yeah. It's down to you giving everything in the ring. It's like what Mike Tyson said, isn't it? It's like everyone's got a plan until he get punched in the face. Yeah. Yeah, well, exactly. And then yeah. what you do with that. Especially, yeah. it's it's at least it's honest in the game. Yeah. The boxing, you know exactly you're going to get punched yeah. in the face. Yeah. Whereas outside the ropes, you don't know where the punches are going to come from. <laughs> but that helps you. The little square will help you yeah. to the hold for the outside. But yeah, it's right until you if you totally dedicated yourself. Yeah. When you get punched in the face, it's not as if it's a surprise. Oh, what's happened here? You know, yeah, well, yeah. it's like getting, yeah, yeah. getting a kick in the leg if you're a footballer. <laughs> exactly. Hey, what's happened? You know what I mean? Something, you know? Yeah, well, it's fucking hell. You get fucking kicked in the fucking leg now. They hit the death. It's all drama, isn't it? Football's a different story. I don't know. From my experience and like from watching yourselves boxing, you know, when I was young, you know, the the the, the difference between the boxers back then to the to the ones today, it's it's totally like. The comparisons like out of this world. Right. Mean? Okay. Well, I don't have to. I listen to you. What yeah. you're saying because you guys follow it. You yeah. know what you're doing. You're either in the business as well on on that side of it, watching it, and either journalism even the journalist side. Yeah. I can't really tell it, but I'll listen to you what you're saying yeah. and I'll take it's. I I to be to be honest, like I don't think you're gonna get like heavyweight boxers like you did in the eighties, seventies, eighties, right, early nineties that you are today. You know, it's it's, it's totally. Different, like a class of boxer compared to ones in your era. Yeah. You know, from from my experience and from my like my opinion, yeah. if it's weird anything, Be um, from following it for years. Do you mean the better now? No, I think they were better back then. Better back then. Yeah. Why? Why? I think it's I don't know. It was more. Um, and know. you said there was more. There's more nutrition now. Everything's moved yeah, on. Yeah, I think it's a bit more it? scientific. I think it's back then. It was like it was proper brawls. You know. Yeah. yeah. They, they were fighting. And today it's, I don't know, I don't think they've got the skill set that they did back then. I just used to love the road. Yeah. I de depended on the road it's for the endurance, yeah. number one. And uh, just basics, you know, uh, the steak, the yeah. uh, steak, whatever, uh, fruits, salad, ice, having a couple of uh, multivitamins, you know. Yeah. That, that was enough <laughs> for me. Yeah, that's all I used to have. But it was mainly the road I depended mentally and psychologically yeah. on the training. It's like filling a car up with petrol. Is it full up with endurance? Yeah. It will do the trip totally, no matter how hard or fast or speed or slow yeah. you're going to go. Whatever's pushing you in there, you'll have to be able to respond. The, the, yeah. the, 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 the endurance is... You'll have the engine. Yeah, it's just down to your mind. Your mind can let you down. 
which is fair enough, yeah. and that's it. And uh, I wanted to let me down. I was trying to get the money to get out. I wasn't <laughs> trying to get the money to get in. If I had the money before I got in Liverpool, I don't well, think I would have been a pro. You've just hit the nail on the head, because I spoke to a guy a few years back called Carla Cat Thompson. I don't yeah. know if you know Carl yeah, Thompson. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, Carl was the first person to knock out David Day. Yeah. Right. Now, I said to Carl, right, because David Day was knocking everyone out at the yeah, time. yeah. Carl's in the ring with him. Carl, like, in his 40s. Yeah. Right, David's age, quite young. Now, I said, what was it that, like, kept you going? He said, look, I've got I've got an engine built, right? And I knew David Day didn't have an engine. He was he was in there for the knockout punch. Yeah. Right, he's got three, four rounds, swaps. But if he hits you, you're going, right? He said, I kept up a guard. I kept shot it. I got a few things in. Um, and I took a good few. He said, but, you know, I just kept going forward. He said, and then I wore him down, and that was it. I knew he had him, right? So when you've got a big engine, like you said, the endurance, the stamina. So he thinks David was like that, right, from the beginning, yeah. or all through his career. He said so he for, didn't really. David, they, he said, like David didn't go the distance. Right. Most of his uh, most of his fights were like doing knockouts early. He said after three, four rounds, he was fucked. And that, I was just going to say, that's yeah. fine to knock him yeah. out and you know, get, get inside the distance, you know. But on the endurance, if he had to go to the 15 or 12 rounds or whatever, yeah. he could have, you're saying he couldn't have done it yeah. because he hadn't applied himself on the training area. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's what I, oh. that's what I, that's what I heard from what Carl was saying. Like. So he's depending on the knockout punch yeah, more yeah. so than, yeah, which yeah. is all their tools, which is great, yeah. but it's the endurance. And I think that, that see, that's, the, that's what I, I think that's happening today. People depend on the knockout punch. Yeah. Right. It's like, who was it, Marvin Agler, or yeah. he said, like, you know. You all got a plan. You know, he said, he said, look, you want to get out of bed at five in the morning and go running. Yeah, he, well, yeah. change your silk pajamas, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah, yeah, silk pajamas, yeah. yeah. Yeah, that was his quote, where he said, yeah, so, that's a different well, levels. Yeah. Once you get to that level, then that problem comes in. Yeah. And whether you raise yourself above that and how you do, and you, whether you do, it's up to you, you know. Yeah. But, you're winning the way his first job is to win the title, get to the top, you know, number one. And then how you maintain it, that's up to the individual. Yeah. Some are greater than others than that, like the Marvin Aglers and all yeah. that, you know. Like wow, it is, it's classic. So these yeah. are great, these are the classic greats or whatever, you know. We'll tell you, us win the wheel of title. But it's quite true what you're yeah. saying, you know. Yeah. And uh, I'm quite honest about it. If I had the silk pyjamas when I was in KB, I wouldn't have bloody damn <laughs> Oh. And some people would have, some fighters would have the silk the pajamas in KB or whatever they're going for, you know, and still turn pro. That's the one. Because they just, they just want to be in there. They want to be fighting. All that. And mine was to get enough money to get out of it, type of thing. All the money in the world doesn't help you though when the bell goes. Yeah, it's more than that. So I'm not blowing my own trumpet here. It's just that that's what the the business demands. As you know, in any business, you get yeah. out of what you put into it. So you know, you yeah. you're training you're underground, whatever yeah. it is. Brilliant. And with that. Thanks for your time. Thanks, God bless you. Thanks. Right, and thanks for watching. Take care.